Welcome back to the Shot Mini RC, everybody. I'm Ken, and today we're looking at the FCX 24 real quick, and FCX 18, technically any FCX uh, platform with a servo on the axle here. I had a question from one of the channel subscribers, basically having issues installing his aftermarket OGRC servo, basically any servo that's a high torque, larger servo, a little bit longer. And he was having issues getting it to mount. And there are some issues mounting a larger aftermarket servo. You can see the length difference here. Let me go ahead and pull this out real quick. I'm gonna to try to make this video as quickly as I can, um, but bear with me. You can see the length of the servo is significantly different and that's going to apply to just about any aftermarket servo whether it's ogrc or an sdrc or reefs or adfgrc or any, whatever shift all of them they're all longer because they're higher torque servos so um, quite a bit longer especially when you go from the mounting ears here okay and the problem is with the fcx platform axles 18 and 24 the link right here can you see it your upper link on the front, it like swoops upward. See that? See how it like swoops? And then when you try to put a flat servo, slide it back, boom, your servo is hitting on that link, which is a problem. So there's a couple answers to that. One of them is there's a Next Speed or Next RC. I think they changed their name, not Next Racing. Next Racing is a totally different company. Um, but they still also do mini RC stuff. Uh, but Next Speed has this servo mount that raises it. I think Ramp Crab also has one, and it basically allows you to adjust and raise your servo up off where the links would be. See how it's floating there? Okay. So that's an option. You can also just use your stock servo mount. And there's a you know there's two ways to, to mount it in there realistically. You can literally just mount it where the old one was, um, but you'll be slightly at an angle. But you can tighten it down. You don't want to tighten it too much, but get your screws in there and just snug it up. Your servo is not going to go anywhere. Get it nice and snug. Just make sure you're not so tight. Let's see, we're we're too tight there. Let me back it out. Don't screw it all the way in until you have both screws in, um, because it'll really because of the angle, screw up the other uh, the other side when you try to screw it in. All right. So you can see we're starting to get it nice and snug. It's starting to flatten out there. It's not you're not going to get it all the way flat because again, your servo is sitting on the link, literally physically touching the link. So this is not ideal, but it is an option. Oh, let's see, might have to loosen this side a little bit. Either way, just get it to where it's snug. It's equal. Basically, the bottom of the servo ear is touching the servo horn. Your top is going to not because, again, it's at an angle. And then just make sure you feel like you're not limiting your articulation because it's rubbing on that upper link. Okay, and it's rubbing on it. You could even take a Dremel to your servo housing if you want and try to notch it out just a little bit to give yourself a little more clearance. But you don't have to. You can see here, I mean, we're pretty free. Um, now, I'm definitely not tight, but if you do go too tight, we'll go ahead and tighten it down. Again, this is a plastic servo housing or servo tray, so it's bending itself forward. But now it's got quite a bit of pressure on the links. Um, and now it does feel, I can feel a little bit of resistance in there. It actually is kind of sticking. See that? Maybe. Either way, um, it is it is rubbing. It's rubbing a little hard, so more than we like. Let's let our stock servo on there, sorry. But you'll just have to make adjustments for that, okay? Um, and if you have it leaning forward too much, you could end up uh, kind of canting this or, or clocking this and that could create binding in your steering link either way you're gonna have to mess with it and depending on how you want to do it or what servo horn you're using and what front links you have and all that kind of stuff you'll have to make adjustments the other option is don't do that pull this out and basically just uh, slide it forward until it's not hitting on the link back here i know it's hard to see but you can get some spacers and literally just kind of slide it forward and mount mount it with some spacers in there. You can use plastic or you could put nuts on the screws as you go in. I don't know. There's a lot of options. You'll have to get some longer screws for sure. 
um, but you can move it forward. That option is going to have issues with the stock chassis. It'll probably end up hitting on your chassis and rubbing. Um, it's it's a balance, right? Everything's a balance. So um, that's probably not the best option. And if you do that, you're going to have to make sure your drag link is mounted behind. You might have to put a spacer back there to make sure you don't have too much of an angle on your drive uh, drag link. Probably not, though. You should be fine. Uh, but de again, it depends on how far you're moving it forward and the kind of drag links you're using and whatnot. Um, but you can uh, you can do that. And then uh, the last option, just mount the servo. If you, Hopefully your servo has multiple mounting holes like this. It's got the three, one, two, three. You can literally just mount it in the bottom and that will lift up your servo and kind of float it. And you can tighten it all the way down then. Again, don't over tighten because it's just going into plastic, but you can get it nice and snug there. And then go nice and snug on this side. Okay. And now your servo just kind of floats, right? And that's totally fine. Your servo's not going anywhere. And you're not rubbing on your rear link. This is probably the way I would do it. Um, however, you just got to be aware that you might rub on your chassis or hit on your chassis and bottom out. Just make sure you've got the clearance you want or, you know, see, we're not able to completely compress here. You got just a little bit of... Uh, shock space there so we're hitting on our tray you might have to trim your tray whatever but you basically you can make it work right um, if you're rubbing on your chassis you can always just trim the top part of the ears off the servo you almost never mount them using those so it doesn't really matter um, but you can definitely trim that off i would leave this little little tabby here though so if you're going to do it just trim this piece off right there and make sure you leave that so that if you do decide to mount a screw in the center, it still has this tab here. But you can trim all this. That makes sense, basically. Basically all that, cut all that off where my, my driver is, okay? Um, and then you won't rub as much, or you can trim the inside of the chassis here. The Ramp Crab is using a uh, aftermarket rail chassis, carbon fiber rail, so you can see there it's definitely not gonna rub it's doing it's effectively doing the same thing it raises the servo and your servo floats on the uh, fcx 18 you have a lot more space in the chassis here so you should be good there the only problem is it looks like you have less space above the servo so you may not get full compression um, if you do that it does kind of suck that fms how they made these axles that link is not adjustable or not movable i'm sure somebody could come out with an aftermarket servo mount that mounts up and your links mount to the servo mount um you'd have to run shorter links it'd be a total custom job but your links come out to your servo mount and you could literally cut these tabs off on the stock axle um so that could be a thing someday who knows um you could also really work something up where you kind of you could trim out, well, no, maybe not, because this is pretty long. It's going to say you could like trim out the ears and then put them out where the ears were that kind of raises it and gives you a, uh, a place to mount your links. But again, you'd have to have different length, upper links to adjust for that. Either way, I just want to show you so you can kind of visualize how it's being done with a different servo, an aftermarket servo in the FCX24 axle. Um, I'd like to see some options though. If somebody's got something better out there, make sure you put it down in the comments below if you've got a better solution or a servo mount that somebody makes that really kind of fits ideally. It sucks we have to raise these up so high because we don't get as much compression, but you can always move your electronics, trim your chassis, and then it goes all the way through and you're, you're fine. I mean, I've seen people with their servos basically push up all the way through their bodies. So um, you just gotta make it work, gotta make it work. A few moments later. All right, I figured while we were in there, we might as well just install it. So we went ahead and threw the um, the servo in there because we we're still in the stock servo. I've got one. Might as well, right? <laughs> so we're good. We went ahead and did it with the, the little bit of uh, rays, just mounting it on the very bottom. And we have pretty much enough compression. I'm not worried about it. If you go straight on, you can see there's a little bit here and here, just a little bit where we could, could get a little bit more compression. But when you go side to side, you get full compression. So... I am not worried about that in the least. Um, we're also not hitting our chassis at all. You can see the ear right there. Totally clearing the chassis on both sides. So we're good there. But yeah, stock uh, stock axle, stock servo tray, OGRC, um, high torque servo. Like I said, just about any other servo is gonna be the same. 
and we're good to go now. Seems good. All right, guys, I hope this helps somebody out. I know it's going to help out the gentleman that was asking questions about the servo, which is why we made this video. We always try to uh, help people as much as we can. We always answer comments. Um, as we grow, it's going to get more difficult, though. So if you could become a channel member, that'll get you priority responses. Um, I will always respond to channel members. Channel members also get to see videos early before anybody else gets to see videos and with no ads. So if you hate the ads, that's one way to help support the channel without ads. We also have swag. Check out our swag. And uh, yeah, I really appreciate all the support, guys. I try to support the community as much as I can. And um, yeah, so that's why we did this little video here. All right, if you got any questions, put them down in the comments. If you got any comments on a better way to do this or a better answer, we will pin it to the top of the comments. Um, that way people can find find the answers if there's a better solution. All right, guys, get out there, build something awesome, build a car, build a course, build a community, smash it, crash it, bash it, but don't break the expensive parts. Peace.